Um, I've noticed on your channel you've had Randall Carson on quite a bit. Um, I just got a, a question, and I wonder if you've, Randall's discussed this with you. Um, he was on the Rogan podcast, and he mentioned that he's working with a group of people that are trying to rediscover ancient technologies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've talked to the guy before. Yeah. Have you spoke to him? Yeah. Okay, I was just wondering if you could uh, share so a bit more info on that. Who's this, Bendall? Yeah, Malcolm Bendall. Graham is probably closer to the Bendall thing than most people. Yeah, I'm, I've been pretty close. I mean, I've been I read talking his book. to Malcolm. Yeah. 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 I've been talking to him. Um, he's, I think it's legit. I mean, here, would, would you want me to try and summarize what it is or? You should I, start by be, just getting clear right away so everyone's eyes aren't, they soon unglaze everyone's ears right off the bat that it's not fucking free energy. Cause I think that's what everyone gets carried away. Well, it's not free energy, they'll kill, but it's not that. It's not free energy. It's just something that probably should have happened a long time ago. You know, this is sort of one of those things where if we didn't have the, the handcuffs on the different innovations and in, you know nuclear and gasoline and the the fuels we're using now that seem to be given to us an abundant supply by the planet could be used more efficiently um i can read from actually so i i know a guy in a chat that went down to see uh a a demonstration with an engine so the brilliant thing about this is it can sort of be attached to any kind of combustion engine, apparently like diesel, gas, whatever it is, it can be attached. And and the gist of it is it, it, it harnesses the, the waste energy and the waste and the waste heat, and it increases the efficiency, but it also transmutes the exhaust. So it changes the exhaust from carbon dioxide to oxygen is, the, is sort of the gist. And it's all based on sacred, sacred geometry and ancient wisdom, like the Vajra from India. I mean, it's, we have a, a good clip of Randall talking about it um, on our show here, but I just want to read, maybe I can read this. Uh, I mean, you know, do you guys, uh, this is video. Should I share my screen quickly here? I don't know if this guy, if I don't know if I'm allowed to do this. Um, it's just a private, this is a private uh, uh, schematic. So it's not even from Malcolm himself. It's from, uh, it's from a guy that showed it, it privately. Can you see it here? So this this is almost like the best way to explain it, and and I hope I'm allowed to show this. But this so the, this fresh this is the unit operation number one. So there's this this pre ionizer that takes this fresh air in, um, this pre ionized air. It goes into this diffuser, a bubbler where there's just water in there. So you put water in there, tap water. They're doing it off a of tap water so that anybody can sort of do it. You don't need to distill water or anything like that. So it makes these bubbles, and then this the bubbles cavitate and they create these plasma, these mini plasmoids that are contained in their, their own electromagnetic field. And then it comes into this thunderstorm generator, which is all built on, this is all like technology that's been, people have used it in the past. It's like a swirl guide where it takes hot air and cold air and it swirls it um, in opposite directions. So it comes up, comes up here that this is the infused air comes up here. Um, the thunderstorm generator. It's, it's a rank, ice vortex it's a vortex tube i guess and then it and then it's so that some of it goes into the goes in this way the plasmoid air mixture goes up into the engine and the the hot air comes down out of the exhaust so and then this is the top of the engine here where it goes fresh air carburetor fuel air mixture custom aluminum there's an add-on block here to connect this plasmoid air mixture then it goes into the engine and then it comes out into here. So the exhaust comes out of the engine, then it goes down the swirl guide and comes out. And this exhaust, there's a part in here where the, the positive and negative creates kind of like this uh, this zero point. And this is what people kind of think. it's It feels a bit uh, like uh, free energy-ish because they mentioned zero point. But that's apparently where you can transmute these uh, all these uh, molecules into oxygen. So the exhaust comes out, it's it's clean, basically, clean exhaust. And this is all like based on like two inches with a, two, there's a two inch ball in the middle with a three inch ball with a four inch ball. It's all based on sacred, sacred geometry and dimensions. Like the whole thing is, is very interesting with the, the, the calculations that he's made. And he has a, he has like a, um, I'll just stop sharing now. I just happened to be sort of reading that yesterday for the show, but that's kind of like a really simple diagram of how the thing works. And it's supposedly, I mean, the, 
So uh, he had a whole team of people doing this demonstration. It seems to work. So this could be applied to like thousands of these uh, fuel generators that are in Africa, for example. Um, they would increase the efficiency. Um, they would e decrease the 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 pollution. I mean, it could be on cars. It could be on. There's one in there's one in the UK on a power plant in the UK. There's huge. So it's like I think the ball was like this big on it. It was a huge thing, and it's been it's been retrofitted on a big power plant in the UK. So it's it seems to be it seems to be going. But I mean, you know, he's been attacked, and I mean, he had like there's a couple of trolls in one of the chat groups that we're in. They're causing a ruckus, and people are saying that you know Joe. Yeah, that was the thing, right? Did you guys did you guys know it was the only Rogan episode that we know of, at least because we're well connected to Randall that didn't air. There was a Rogan episode recorded that was never. I heard there was one with was um yeah with Graham Hancock that didn't air, but I thought it was just a rumor. I don't know about Graham Hancock, but the one with Randall Carlson and uh, Malcolm Bendall, the guy whose work Graham's talking about right now, definitely was recorded and did not air. I know that one hundred percent for mm. a fact. Wow. Wow. Unless I'm being game, told by people that I consider real good friends, like real good friends, you know, mm -hmm. like we're business together, good friends. So was this quite recent, this episode? Didn't it? Because I, I think I remember from the episode where he first mentioned about this new technology. Yeah. Rogan said he was getting back on to talk it. about it. Yeah, it was they like did, two, yeah, they did. Yeah. Yeah, it was like two months or a month. It was with a few yeah. months after the last Randall appearance. I would like to say February, maybe this year or something like that. Okay. Mm. That makes yeah. sense because the episode never came and I was wondering where, why it never came. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's been a big, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, Joe's just protecting Randall. Randall's getting scammed by this guy. and then, But, I mean, I just don't think that's the case. I think the guy is, he's very spiritual. He has a really, really unique spiritual perspective on it. He's he's made he's made a, a sort of a theory of everything type thing where he's got time involved in it, and it takes Randall's sort of sacred geometry and even expands it a little bit more. And he's figured out he the frequencies of the elements. So each element is has this frequency, um, which is how you're able to transmute them. I guess if you know the frequency of an element, you can create stuff that you know that will I guess will will resonate with it. So it's it's really really. Uh, fascinating. I think, I mean, I, I've heard that even like India is involved, the country of India, where with uh, with some of their Navy, they're getting involved. Like, so it seems like people are taking him seriously, whether you want to, you know, whether the the people in the Western uh, atheist kind of, you know, uh, scientism, they're never going to accept this. I mean, because he can't really explain it in in a term that that that, that our, our scientists can understand because they're they're still thinking in terms of relativity. Right. And he's like, no, this is this is not. It's all based on ancient uh, Vedic, you know, knowledge, right? That's crazy. That is actually crazy. That's what I love about it so much is like the 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 orig the origin story of this is so fascinating because it's so spiritual. Like it's it's the way he talks about it. It's like the one the one like when you find out. He I, and I can't I can't even repeat it properly, but he, he some paraphrase when you find out this one thing, it's the answer to everything, and that's kind of what the Vajra the Vajra is all about. And and I guess he thinks that's what that Tesla said too, didn't he? Uh, I think he said, I think he said three, six, and nine, or something is the answer to everything, or or it's vibration, uh, vibration, frequency, and energy is is everything, but. uh but he uh, he thinks that the, you know, the torus, you've heard of the torus, that's sort of like a donut shaped thing where the energy flows in this torus shape. Um, I mean, I could show you some graphics and stuff about that too, but the torus um, he thinks is, uh, is the way that these water, these water bubbles collapse in a, in a, in a toroid. If you look at the cross section of a torus, it's like a Vajra. That's kind of what he's saying. Right. Okay. That's mind blowing that he's managing to put all that's take some mind power to be able to put this back together. Not just my hardest I mean, problem with it is just that, you know, how it's like it's our buddy's buddy. I mean, it just seems too crazy to be true, you know. You end up being buddies with a guy that, you know, I guess it happens to everyone all the time. But it was more of a download type. Like he, he talks about downloads, right? And plasma. 
is like sentient. So, I mean, he, it gets crazy because he talks about the plasmas. He infused himself with this plasmoid stuff too. I mean, and, and it communicates with him. He can get downloads. I mean, it gets deep, deep, that deep. Which, crazy. Yeah, the, <laughs> I know. Leave that out. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but I'm going to be honest because that's one of the things that people use, right? As against it. Oh, you know, this guy's just cuckoo crazy, but well, you know, some you of think us, this is a, this is a step in the direction of free energy. Well, I do think so because even though it's not free now, the technology could be used for you know to to better it. I mean, he's developing a turbine based on this technology. So he talks about spaceships. He talks about a global energy system that if you can harness the ionospheric electricity that comes down into the earth, he's got a whole design where it comes into the mountain. You build a tunnel down a mountain. With a with a, a horizontal tube coming out, a horizontal cave coming out the other side, and you can harness this energy for the planet. If you if you put a a rod up to the ionosphere, so it's I mean, and people are doing this electroculture thing now everywhere too, and that was like really huge in the early 1900s, and they squashed that somehow. But there seems to be like a way to harness the electricity from the ether and and use it. 